thunder rumbled nearby, and the clouds flashed brightly as lightning forked across the sky. A steady rain fell upon the small farming village that had no name. Many people would say, this was a bad sign for such a beginning. But Kazuma Renoki still grinned widely. The lovely fragrance of rain saturated the area, and it was one of his favorite smells. Coupled with his favorite sound, the powerful boom of thunder, today was proving to be a great omen. Storms were Renoki's element, for it was said he was born during the height of one of the most savage storms to ever hit. Renoki, like most of his clan, was a slender, well-toned, and fit young man. His black hair was cut extremely short on the sides, with about two inches on top. He had a pair of unassuming, light brown eyes, and a pair of neatly trimmed eyebrows over them. Renoki wore a comfortable pair of tan slacks, a light long sleeve jacket that had been dyed red, almost pink. He also had a pair of straw sandals too. A sash belt was wrapped around his waist, and tucked between the belt and his body were multiple star pouches, each with three thin throwing stars in them. The pouches were actually woven into the insides of the sash and concealed to all who didn't know about them. Several throwing knives were also hidden in the insides of the jacket as well. Because of the rain, Renoki also wore a wide-brimmed hat and a cape as well. The rain started falling harder, but Renoki didn't fret too much about it. While others scrambled to get out of the rain or moved under drier paths, Renoki walked out in the middle of the road where the rain was the most prevalent. He didn't dawdle about, but moved with determination and intention. After all, today was special. He had been told where to go, and the general layout of the village when he first moved to the village with no name a week prior. Renoki's destination was a small hut on the eastern side of the village. As he made his way down the road, other villagers noticed him, and they all gave him nods or gestures. They all were just like him. They were Izu Soshi. The hut appeared like any other dwelling within the village, unassuming and innocent. There was a large tree out front of the hut, and waiting beneath the tree was a young woman. She wasn't wearing a poncho, but she still had a wide-brimmed hat, just like Renoki's. She wore a light purple pair of slacks, a matching sleeveless shirt, and she wore a black sash around her waist. Upon her feet, she wore straw sandals. She smiled broadly as Renoki came up to the hut. Hey, hey, hey! Are you him? The new guy from out of town? <laughs> the one from the Kazama clan? How, how did you know that? I didn't think anyone aside from my officer would know that. Well, I know because I'm in your squad. <laughs> Hi there! I wanted to be the first one you saw. The name is Zenji Ko. Zenji Ko? The Zenji clan is said to be experts at flame work and incendiary operations. Yep, and true to my family legacy, I like to burn things in. <laughs> and people. The Kazama clan are the throwers, right? Yeah, I suppose if you only want to capture a fraction of my family's legacy. We Kazamas specialize in thrown weapons, like shuriken. Thrown spikes, knives, and stones. We also train ourselves with advanced infiltration techniques. I'm Kazama Runogi. I'm not late, am I? No, no, you're fine. And on time. Everyone else is waiting inside where it's dry. <laughs> but I love the rain. The way it smells. The way it brings life to the land. <sighs> Rain's the best. I love storms, too. They're my favorite element. <laughs> well then, you have great taste. <sighs> but let's get inside and get this mission briefing started. Ko stepped up from the tree and then gestured for Renoki to follow. When Ko whirled around, Renoki saw the pair of folded up battle fans tucked against the small of her back, held up by the sash. She opened the straw curtain and gestured for Renoki to enter. So he did. Inside the hut sat three people around a small cooking fire.
The first person Renoki saw was an older woman sitting across from the door. She had long black hair tied into a ponytail with its base forming at the top of the back of her head. Her bright blue eyes fell on Renoki and he immediately froze. The woman's gaze was hard, discerning, and piercing, to say the least. She wore a dark magenta long sleeve jacket, a pair of magenta pants, and sandals. Another woman sat on the right side of the fire. She had short, light brown hair that was almost red, a pair of green eyes, and an inviting smile. Her outfit consisted of a light blue long sleeve jacket, a matching pair of pants, and sandals. She appeared to be around Renoki and Ko's age. Her hands rested in front of her, and she wore dark iron claws on her knuckles. The claws were two inches long, and they appeared quite sharp. The third person was a man, also around Renoki and Ko's age. He scowled at Renoki, perhaps displeased that he wasn't a solo rooster in a hen house anymore. His head was shaved and a pair of thin but well-groomed brown eyebrows hovered over hazel eyes. The young man wore a light brown sleeveless shirt, a pair of darker slacks, and a set of sandals on his feet. The older woman gestured for Ko and Renoki to sit, so they did. Greetings, Kazama Renoki. Welcome. My name is Lieutenant Niwa Ajoy, and I'm going to be your officer until further notice. It's great to meet you, Lieutenant Niwa. I'm eager to serve the Izusoshi. Ugh, he's like a puppy. The other young woman snickered into her hand. Lieutenant Niwa maintained her expression, though, and she gestured first to the young man, then the young woman. He is Sasuke Nasio, our assassin specialist, and she is Tresenta Momo, our espionage and disguise specialist. I see that you've already met our incendiary specialist, Zenji Ko. Hi there, it's great to meet you! Can't wait to see what you bring to the team! You would better not slow us down. This is Kazama Renoki, and he is going to be our new infiltration specialist. It's really great to meet you all. I can't wait to show you what I bring to the table. So, what are you bringing to the table? What can you do? Oh, well, the Kazamas are infiltration specialists, as well as thrown weapons experts. I can plant a throwing star, a knife, or a spike anywhere I want, although I usually aim for the eyes or throat. So, you're an assassination specialist? Yeah, that's right. My weapon of choice is the chain and sickle. Don't get in my way and I won't have to demonstrate my abilities on you. Oh, don't mind, CO. He loves to play at that tough guy routine. Especially in front of Momo. Sio groaned a little as Momo and Ko laughed a little harder. Oh, don't be like that. I love that you're a macho man. <laughs> I've heard of the Kazuma clan having advanced infiltration techniques. So, are you going to teach us any of your little tricks since we're in the same squad? Oh, um, sure. I'd be willing to trade some of my clan secrets for yours. The Tresenta clan is legendary for their acting and disguise craft. Oh yes! My clan prides itself on having way more aliases than other agents in the Izu Soshi. Personally, I have 20 aliases I can easily slip into. How many do you have, new guy? Oh, I... mastered six? Oh, what? Don't let it get you down. I only have eight, and Momo helped me acquire three of them, so you're already better than when I first started. <laughs> Well, when I began, I had eight mastered, and now I have fifteen. That's because you're constantly kissing up to Momo. <laughs> Seriously, he's been hounding after her since he started. Don't even think about trying to pursue her too, or Sio will get you. And that's not a joke this time. Mm, shut up, Ko. Alright, that is enough. Let's begin the briefing. Sio, Momo, and Ko nodded, and Renoki nodded several seconds after them. We are deploying to the city of Iaiko in order to gather information for a client about the target, Lord Hojiro Jiwaka. Lord Hojiro is a wealthy businessman who is causing strife for our client, and so we have two major objectives for our mission. With that being said, we shall be splitting up into two teams. 
Lieutenant Niwa pointed first to Momo, and then to Ko. Momo, Ko, you two will be leading separate teams. Sio shall be paired with Momo as they have great dynamics, and you, Renoki, will be shadowing Ko during this mission. Yes, ma'am. While you have successfully completed operative training, this will be your first time in the field. Watch Ko, support her in her tasks, and follow her instructions. For this mission, she is your superior officer. Oh, I'm going to be a severe taskmaster. The only thing you do severely is burn things down. Aside from that, you never take anything seriously. Oh, whatever. I do too. Ugh. Don't listen to him, Renoki. Listen to me, because I'm your boss until we get back here. <laughs> I won't let you down. I expect good things from you. This mission will take about two to three months to complete at least, and maybe longer depending on the client needs and their budget. While we are in Iaiko, we will split into two teams, as I had already specified. Team one, which is Momo and Sio, you two will be posing as a pair of young nobles, relocating your new enterprises to Iaiko. Your objectives here are to get in contact with Lord Hojiro, get into his confidences, and gain information related to his political and perhaps underworld connections. Oh, they have to pretend to be a young married couple. Mm, how sweet. <laughs> it's Sio's wet dream. Seriously, shut up or I'll- Oh, are you saying you don't want to dote on me in public, husband? Well, I- <clears throat> I'll do my duty. <laughs> yeah, he will. He better. <laughs> <laughs> you two are free to enjoy yourselves, but you had better not lose sight of the mission. Of course not, ma'am. You can count on us. I know I can. Renoki, what aliases have you mastered? Oh, my aliases? Oh, well, I've mastered Farmer, Wandering Warrior, Wandering Saito Monk, Journeyman Blacksmith, Doctor, and uh, Apothecary. Ko, you have Apothecary as well, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, then you two will pose as new Apothecaries in town. A brother and sister team, if anyone asks. When you are not acting the part, Renoki, you will assist Ko in identifying all of the warehouses and workshops that belong to Lord Hojiro. I want information on what's in those warehouses, what the workshops are making, and how often traffic goes into and out of those places. Yes, ma'am. I'll do my best. I will be posing as a handmaiden to Momo and Sio, which will allow me to gather my own intelligence, as well as connect with you two as well. Momo and Sio, you will adopt the aliases of Lord and Lady Shisuyan. I don't care what you use as first names, just don't forget them. Lieutenant Niwa gestured toward Renoki and Ko. Ko, I want you to be ready, because I suspect by the end of our mission, our client will want us to sabotage those warehouses, workshops, and perhaps even infiltrate Lord Hojiro's estate. When that time comes, Renoki, I expect you to help get her inside. While we travel on the boat to Iaiko, would you please go over your Kazama infiltration techniques with us? Yes, ma'am. I can show you our special toolkit and how to make them. Just because you're showing us your clan's secrets doesn't mean I'm ever going to show you any of the Sauskina advanced assassination techniques. Well, I'll trade some of my clan's sky secrets. Some, but not the best ones. You understand, I'm sure. Yes, and I don't blame you. There are super secret Kazama stealth techniques that I can't teach you. But I will use them for the team's benefit. All right. Does anyone have any questions? So am I to assume there shouldn't be any assassinations on this mission? Assassination is only allowed if someone discovers our true nature, and we need to silence them to continue the mission. However, Lord Hojiro and his family are not to be assassinated. The client wants to avoid any bloodshed, with the exception of possible incendiary operations later. Possible, Ko. It's not guaranteed. Oh, I really hope we get to... I can't help my nature. <laughs> I have a question. 
You mentioned possibly infiltrating Lord Hojiro's estate. Is that something that is um, contingent on the client's request? Should Ko or I scout out the layout of Lord Hojiro's residence? No. If the residence is to be infiltrated, then it will fall to Momo or Sio. You and Ko will be focusing on the warehouses, workshops, and other non-residential priorities. Good question, though. Also, I will be the go-between for both teams. Under no circumstances should you two cross paths. Is there any chance of another clan serving Lord Hojiro? It is always a possibility, but I do not believe there will be any counter-operatives. Still, keep an eye out for anything strange. Any other questions? No one said anything, and in turn, Lieutenant Niwa eyed them to ensure all inquiries were posed. Gather your supplies and your disguises. We will leave the village tomorrow and board our boat in two days. Renoki, as this is your first mission, I want you to take some extra time to steal yourself. Operations can be exhausting, even with your training. Just rely on Ko, and you will be fine. Hey, don't worry. I'll make sure he's okay. Um, actually, would you like to walk home in the rain? We live really close, so I could go over what you should bring, you know, for the... Yeah. Thank you. I'd really appreciate that. All right. Dismissed. Don't be late for departure. Lieutenant Niwa elegantly rose to her feet and walked out of the hut. Sio got up without looking at Renoki and left as well. I can tell he really likes you. <laughs> Welcome to the team. See you later. As Renoki and Ko got to their feet, Momo jumped to her feet. She skipped out of the hut. Oh, hey, wait. Before we head back to your place, I have to show you Mika's place. He has the best restaurant in the village. Well, it's the only restaurant in the village, but that's why it's the best. We have to celebrate your first mission by having some yokai spit. What's yokai spit? Oh, you'll see. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Ko just laughed, grabbed Renoki's hand, and led him out of the hut.